Bon, donc je, je vous explique, on a essayé d'organiser une session de cas cliniques pour profiter de l'expertise de nos collègues euh, outre-Atlantique. Donc il y a euh, Jean Lamontagne qui est euh, à Montréal. Euh, et euh, Adam Starr qui est à Dallas, euh, qui ont une non, grosse expérience tous les deux de la chirurgie. Euh, du... Et euh, il devait y avoir Navy Ziran, mais je crois qu'il a... il dort. Il a oublié. Et donc, euh, on leur a demandé de, de participer à la discussion et de faire les commentaires des, des trois cas cliniques de cet après-midi. Voilà. Donc, euh, techniquement, c'est un peu le bazar, mais ça va être sympa. Ouais, ouais. Ok. Comment je fais pour... Euh... Ok. Ils nous entendent, hein, c'est bon. Ouais. Good morning uh, for Jean and good evening for the other one. Uh, so this is a, a case, as you know, c'est normal que ça passe là au-dessus Non. Ok. Thanks. As you know, in Belgium, it's a country for biking. We have a lot of champions. Today you can see the hand of the Vuelta. We will see who will win. So this is a case of a very active 70 years old male with no comorbidities, very active sportsman, making bike three times a week, uh, uh, 120k and uh, also uh, practicing running and you have a, a bike accident and so this is the the x-ray you can see here it's a severe fracture okay ça bouge pas it doesn't ah. Ok. Non, Mais il y avait une image avant, non Ok. So, this is the, the fracture in 3D. You see, it's a nearly a full uh, both colon fracture with severe displacement uh, posteriorly, uh, anteriorly, but also you can see it was a, a, a part of the posterior wall. So, uh, normally it's. So you can see uh, the fracture more actively. You can look the different part in the, the problem you get. And you will see that, okay. So it's an incomplete both fracture because one part of the, uh, the wing is still not completely broken, but the rest is. So the question will be the treatment, uh, which uh, we go for osteosynthesis totally patroplasty in the same time, both you can do successively, simultaneously, and which approach you can choose for that. So you can see here another uh, view, you see that the head was uh, damaged by the fracture, and uh, you can see here with a, a big uh, problem at that level too. And you can see also there was a, on the, the right side, you can see that the, a part of the, the coverage is also uh, severely um, injured. So, ça arrive en arrière, ça. Okay. So the, the strategy we choose, it's uh, we make a planning uh, for for a total hypertrophy, but we go first for uh, acetabular osteosynthesis, and then depending uh, when we have the results of the osteosynthesis, we will open the uh, the joint by anterior approach. And to see how is the head, if the head is really destroyed, we go for total hypertroplasty in one time, but we think that we have to go for total hypertroplasty. So we use the modified SOPA approach with the first window. We make also base extension uh, asis osteotomy, uh, and you make in the same time a whatever approach. We don't make, this is a mistake. In this case, I don't make rectus uh, desassertion. And so this is the, how look the head after removing it. You, you see that it was severely damaged, so I think it was a good idea. It's in very active patient. Oh, the first question was when he was in his bed is when can I bike again? Because he have a competition in nine months that he really want to do. But okay, that is another question. So we decide to use this approach to make this uh, osteosynthesis by anterior osteo uh, approach and at the same time uh, totally partroplasty with a revision cup and some additional screw. But in fact, after the reduction, we have a good uh, press fit. Uh, we just put a screw to avoid problem. The only criticism that I will do is that maybe we put some screw in the posterior colon through the plate, 
but uh, I don't put a, a long screw uh, that uh, place. So I think that is the only thing that I probably have to do it. So this is the, the CT after the, the, uh, the surgery. You can see here. And so you can see how is it with the plating in the correction. So I think in this very active patient with a head destroyed, it's a way to treat it. You can do it two times, but I think for this guy who is very uh, active, who want to go back to to sport, I think it's better to... So post-op with uh, two contact for six weeks, passive mobilization, uh, no active flexion uh, of lip bracing for six weeks. And so at six weeks, we make a X-ray, 50% weight bearing, and at three months, uh, control and full weight bearing. So we are still uh, at four weeks, and uh, for the post immediate post-op, we don't have any complication. The time of the surgery here was uh, four, uh, 30 in this case, and uh, blood loss was uh, one liter uh, uh, 200, but we use a self-saver, so it was not so uh, a big problem. The time to surgery is 30 days after... Uh, no, the time of the surgery, four hours, 30 minutes. But the time of the surgery between the, the length of the surgery, if you prefer. Okay, so I think on doit demander à Jean. Can I, can I ask about your anterior approach? You're, you're, you're using a Hooter uh, French style approach to, to get to, to do your hip replacement. If there is a bit more comminution of the posterior wall or the posterior column, do you find that a problem going in anteriorly? Uh, for your hip replacement? It could be. So uh, if it's a major posterior fracture, probably I don't use this approach. But uh, in both colon fracture, in most of the case, I get the way to put the plate, using the plate as a cage, in fact, yeah. in the same time. And I, then in other case, I put a long screw in the ischium or in the... Uh, uh, to the spine. And, and did you put fixation in the posterior fragment there? Sorry? <laughs> ah. did, 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 you, did you put a fixation in the posterior fragment? Yes, there, through, the, through the plate oh, and, and okay. one-shot screw was also posed. But oh, okay. I prefer to have a long one, but I don't uh, write because there was communication on the place where I have to put the, the, the screw. And it's why the idea of U-plate, it's a good idea because it's possible to use the, the plate uh, as, a, as a buttress to, to protect the screw for the long screw. But here, it was damaged and was not possible to have a good stability of the this even with a rondel uh, 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 washer even with washer the washer was too small for the the combination of the place where I have to put the screws the long screws maybe let's so your plate could be a, a solution to that and let's maybe listen to Jean if Jean has something to say vous m'entendez oui oui donc bonjour tout le monde j'aurais préféré être sur place je suis bien content de vous retrouver vous entendre voir vos visages donc, euh, Marc, très beau cas. Euh, donc, euh, si on commence avec, euh, avec le cas, tout d'abord, euh, as, you, as, you, as I get older, I found uh, 70 years old is not at all, and uh, you still want to be active. So, uh, you don't just have to uh, care about the uh, physiological age rather than the, uh, the huge number. Uh, that patient has a, a, a big functional demand, so uh, your treatment should address that. And it's all about, uh, should we save this hip or replace it? So that uh, basically the question, the big question we should uh, be asking is, are we able to obtain an anatomical reduction of that fracture? And in some cases it's possible uh, through a expert hand uh, some difficult fracture can be dealt with and uh, you can obtain uh, a great reduction. You can save the hip, but in other fracture like this one, especially because of the uh, central dislocation, which is uh, most of the time associated with femoral head fracture or uh, dome impaction, these fractures are pretty difficult to, uh, to reduce adequately and have an anatomical reduction. So that's the type of fracture I would consider a total hip replacement like you did. Uh, These fractures are also associated sometimes with a lateral, lateral compression uh, mechanism. 
So you should uh, look for a pelvic fracture, fracture to the uh, sacrum and rami fracture. So uh, that's something that you, you should look up at your, uh, while you're studying your CD scan. Uh, you need to see the uh, actual cut to uh, define or classify the fracture. Uh, for the purpose of uh, your presentation, uh, you, uh, you did go straight to the uh, 3D CD, which is okay. Uh, basically, um, there's other uh, indication for acute uh, hip replacement. Uh, if the, there is an associated thermal neck fracture, if the uh, posterior wall is highly comminuted, that's an indication to me because the prognosis is very bad, like you discussed through uh, previous cases at, at the uh, previous session. The poor bone quality is also a factor that I take into account. Once you decide to uh, do a hip replacement, uh, you should pay attention to few detail, uh, just like you did. Uh, my religion is to uh, do a true uh, a fixation of the astabler and rather use a primary cup and primary stem. If you're more like a recon uh, guy, you may uh, go straight to a, a revision cup, a cup cage, that type of stuff. And regarding the approach, uh, I think if you want to reduce this fracture adequately, you need to uh, use an intrapelvic approach. Uh, otherwise, you'll, you'll be in trouble. And uh, whatever the type of prosthesis you want to use that need to hold on, on the solid uh, structure. So you need to reduce the iliac wing through this case. So that's the reason why you need to, to uh, adequately reduce the s and being able to put a, a prosthesis that will, uh, that will stay in place and allowed as much as possible early weight bearing. Early weight bearing doesn't mean immediate weight bearing in, in some of the cases. So uh, I agree with you that uh, in some patients taking like six weeks of protected weight bearing is still okay and might be the uh, good thing to, uh, to do to uh, save your fixation. So uh, just going back, to, just to resume my thought on, on this case, I think you, you did uh, a great job. Uh, I, would, I would have used a different approach for my total hip, but it's just a matter of uh, the approach you're comfortable with and being able to deal with the complication. We're all uh, afraid of uh, having a dislocation, which is uh, maybe more common with posterior approach, but they, they, this has the advantage to deal with the uh, posterior comminution and maybe buttress the posterior column to have a, a better hold with your cup. That just depend on the uh, fracture pattern to me. So uh, using an anterior approach has disadvantages, but it has different uh, complication. And I think it's more like uh, you have to use the one that you're more comfortable with. And uh, in this case, uh, I think you did okay. Thank okay you. For the uh, I have um, uh, one question. Can you? Uh, can you show the, the 3D uh, exopelvic view? Uh, Before the surgery? Yes. Mm -hmm. I have a question. I, I think it's a good option to do, perform uh, osteosynthesis and total hemorrhagic in this case uh, uh, because you described the, the, that it was a very uh, active patient. No, no, in, in very old patient, probably. But I don't go. Fine. The, the head was really damaged. But, uh, but my question is not really about that. But uh, I think it, it, it's not a typical uh, fracture on fragile bone. Uh, because no, no, no. If, no, you, if you show the exopelvic view, you say that you have a posterior wall fracture associated with. Uh, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's not a posterior a classical posterior. No. Role. it's a, uh, it's a, like a tricolon fracture that we described yeah, yeah. it with this uh, typical form of the posterior yeah, superior yeah, exactly. fragment. I, I think, yeah. and it's um, it's um, an equivalent of a boscolon fracture. Yeah. And um, if you do your uh, uh, fixation as you uh, did it, uh, you may. Do you have? Did you have any problems to put your uh, acetabular cup uh, 
because of this uh, independent fragment on I the fix it. pelvic view. I fixed it before. Before the, the pushing cup. the cup, yeah. I fixed it by uh, going down with the clamp and uh, making a screw. Okay. The During the fixation. Yes. I, I first fix it to be sure, and because it was related to another another part inside which was both was moving and separated, so I close it all together. And uh, in fact, yeah, it's uh, like you say, trickling fracture. It was funny, but this was an high energy trauma. It's not a fragility fracture. He was biking at uh, 40k, and then <laughs> he, he he missed the, a changing of direction. <laughs> okay. In a group, so. Okay. Just, just as a. The the senior guys will know this anyway, but just for junior people in the room, uh, this. What's happened here, uh, uh, Guillaume's right, it's, a, it's an, it's an uh, ABC equivalent where the head has gone medially, and that would be your spur sign just here. But uh, this bit here is intact. You can see that fracture line going up, 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 and then it kind of stops. And, uh, and this bit of bone is still intact, but it's been bent and buckled. So it's been plastically deformed. Yeah. So if you try and now reduce this without cutting through there, it is really difficult to get back. Exactly. So actually, the, the first move here is an osteotomy yeah. straight into there. And suddenly, oh, the whole thing moves and you can get it reduced. Right. I was thinking to do that, but I arrived to, to reduce it just with uh, bending the, 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 the ala, and then I can put it. Uh, I think it's uh, Jean. Okay, Jean, have something to say? Okay. Is it you hear me? Yes. So, a little question for Mark and a little comment in relation to Dr. Starr. So, Mark, what is the reason why you did the ASIS osteotomy? That's my question, and my commentary actually is uh, the thing in North America, few, uh, very few surgeons have the uh, ability to uh, do trauma and to do recon. So that might be the reason why uh, some trauma guy will send the patient over to a recon guy to get the, uh, the hip done. So the advantages that, uh, that we have is uh, if you do both, then you're comfortable doing uh, an uh, ORIF of the astablum and a total hip right away. Yes, uh, just uh, answer the two questions in the remark. First of all, uh, in this case, when I have to reduce a so difficult uh, fracture, I, I, I use to combine stopper approach with the systematic osteotomy to, to make free easily the, the, the psoas and to avoid to damage it when it's more easy to, to, to move it and flex the hip during the surgery or not, depending on uh, the, the time where I have to reduce some part. And so I nearly uh, in most of the case of that kind of fracture I make uh, an osteotomy and s of the iliac spine and sometime when the fracture go very low uh, I make a disinsertion also of the rectus to have a, a good control of it to, and then I, I, I put the plate and then I reinsert by transverse uh, uh, stitches in the, the inferior iliac spine and the anterior superior iliac spine and for the rest also, I think if we have more and more cases of periprosthetic fracture, which uh, concern the acetabular part, and you have sometimes some, such a fracture with acetabulum in place. So I think it's important to be able to make a hip replacement and trauma in the same time for such patient. Okay. We'll go to the next case. Thank you, Mark. So Pierre Emmanuel, we uh, present another case. Uh, pelvic trauma case. Pierre Emmanuel works uh, in our mm. department also in Saint Joseph. So hi everybody. I'm, I'm going yeah. to, to show you a case we did uh, this summer. Uh, it's about a 73 years old uh, patient uh, who had a high energy uh, trauma of the pelvis. Uh, he has also an history of proximal femur fracture, and uh, in this trauma, he had a pelvic injury. Uh, proximal humeral fracture, an elbow fracture, and a wrist fracture. He was transferred in our uh, department 10 days after the trauma. So uh, I show you the, the 3D view uh, of, uh, of his pelvis, so, so we can see a vertical instability. 
with a sacral fracture, also a ramus fracture, and a, and a disruption of the symphysis. So uh, after I, I show you the, the AP view, the pelvic AP view after traction, so we can see there is a reduction of the vertical uh, instability, but the, pe the, the, the pelvis is still open. Uh, on this CT view, uh, I put this CT view, this uh, axial view of the pelvis to show the, the S1 corridor to see if it was uh, easy to, to manage an iliosacral uh, screwing. So we decided to, it was a very, really old patient. It's not this patient, it was very bigger, <laughs> but uh, it's to, so to show um, the installation. So we put, it, we put him on a traction table, a radiolution traction table, Jude table, on prone position with a uh, O-arm for uh, a CT uh, control. Prone position? No. Supine. Supine. Supine, yes, sorry. Supine, uh, supine position. Uh, so this, this is the X-ray. Initi the initial x-ray without any uh, maneuver. So after we, we did, an, we don't have the, sp the star frame, so we did an, uh, ex an X fixation uh, that we put on the table with um, its, uh, its arms that we use in the spine for the spine retractors, and we can man manage to put auto fix uh, X fixation to uh, fix the um, right pelvis to the table and uh, in this way we are able to, to have traction with the uh, with, uh, orthopedic uh, table and also we can have a maneuver with the wires with um, uh, X fixation in the other part of the bone. So we could did, we could, uh, we did uh, a reduction of the vertical part in the first of all, then we did a compression on the left side to have a good uh, reduction of the posterior uh, fracture. But you can see on the anterior part, there was too much compression, and so uh, there was a little disp uh, displacement uh, in the anterior part of the pelvic ring. Uh, after this, we did uh, two iliosacral screwing in S1 and N2 uh, uh, iliosacral screwing under navigation. And you can see on, this, on the CT uh, operatively, we could achieve a good reduction uh, in every plane. So we, we, are, we were very happy of that. And after, we release, a, we release a compression and we could manage to, uh, to achieve a reduction on the anterior part percutaneously using a picador. Then we did a percutaneous screwing with uh, on the iliac branch and on the synthesis. So uh, the, the anatomy was, was restored Presque with uh, lead, not a lot of plaque. damage. So we were very uh, happy of this uh, procedure, of this reduction. But five days after <laughs> surgery, the patient was painful in his bed, so we asked for x-ray and everything was displaced again. So <laughs> it was a big, it was the same as before. Uh, so it was uh, a bit difficult. So we decided to, f uh, to do first step, uh, the posterior uh, approach for iliolumbar approach. So we could achieve a, a reduction of the vertical instability. But with the posterior approach, it's really hard to, to have a good anterior uh, reduction when you, are, uh, when you do a uh, medial lumbar fixation, it's really hard to, to reduce uh, the anterior part. That's why when we did the anterior stop approach for the plating, uh, the, the reduction was not as good as, uh, as the reduction with the uh, fix uh, external fixator. And that's all. And uh, he's uh, actually in rehab. He, he left uh, 10 days ago, so we don't have the, the follow-up. Yes? Question, Mehdi. Uh, just a comment. Uh, next time, um, it's always easier to say that after, but uh, you had yeah. a very good reduction percutaneously. Yeah. Yeah. It's a big patient, you said. It was uh, a big patient. Uh, yeah, whole so uh, I think you, if you want to prevent some displacement, you can put an infix. Yeah. internal fixator uh, with uh, screws uh, suprastabular from spine uh, device 
a road, long screws, 8.5, and you won't have any displacement, and you will keep your, your perfect reduction. You know, wh when we did the posterior, the spine approach, uh, we, we could see the, the bone was very, uh, oste there was osteoporosis, the pedicle screws, uh, the pedicle was, uh, were uh, really uh, fragile, yes. So, uh, so that's, that's why the posterior iliosacral screw was not enough, I think. Yeah, but with an infix? Yes, yes, in front? Uh, yes, yes, uh, it, yes, uh, it, it won't, it won't maybe move, Maybe it's, an, it's uh, an option. Next time. Next time. Also, do, do you ever use transsacral screws? Because, I, I mean, I would always yes. use transsacral for this. Yes, yes, maybe, maybe it's another And option. just go back to the original because fixation. Uh, I can show uh, There. Uh, so those, are, those, those screws are fully threaded? Yes. yes. Uh, I mean, I would always try and compress a fracture like this, this to try and get case, some... you know, when we put the screws, the bone was very... It was not good for very weak. We it was very we shit. We couldn't, we, we couldn't do compression. <laughs> yes. Shitty. Yeah. Yes. So, 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 so why not go transsacral at that point, knowing it's very screw. shitty? We don't have this type of screw, so maybe. Oh, okay. Yes. Okay. But we thought it was enough. But yeah. It wasn't. I have a question. It's difficult to to say, but. No, Miko. Yeah, do you think that if you play it entirely? And the first step in the beginning, you, you, you will get this displacement too, or not? It's difficult with to say. It's just I, no. because we, when I see the screw, I think it was moving. I just say to Mehdi, but if you say that the bone is very weak, the bone maybe well, the posterior fixation was not I enough, that's in fact. That's, that's the reason why we would, like no, it's interesting. we would like to discuss this case with Adam, because he showed us uh, that's some, why we did it. It's months ago, of him. some months ago, <laughs> uh, such <laughs> a case. Sure. It was not really the same case, but he, he, he showed us an example of a percutaneous fixation yeah. with an horizontal screw in the symphysis. And I think it could be a good technique, a good option to uh, avoid the uh, approach. It's, uh, but in this case, maybe the displacement was too important. Or oh, the bone. And the quality of the bone too, too bad. I, I, I don't know the, the reason. Maybe our experience of this screw is not uh, enough to have, uh, because it, it's not so easy to have uh, the good entry point mm -hmm. and to have uh, uh, enough bone uh, in each part of the symphysis to have a strong yes. fixation. I don't know. The reason, but. Uh, you hear me? Wait. So, so just a comment. Uh, I would have used transacral screw too because uh, the fracture was uh, highly displaced and uh, with some comminution. So I think uh, putting short screw that just cross the fracture and and short across the fracture is not a stable fixation. So I would have used a transacral screw. Then you can use the first screw can compress the fracture. Then you can hold it with a second screw that, that is fully threaded. Uh, so that's exactly what I would have done. The uh, question is regarding, do you use uh, neurologic uh, monitoring during the, this type of uh, fixation? Because the, uh, the fracture was ID displaced and the uh, L5 root is right in the fracture. No. No, we don't, but uh, I think it's, uh, it's possible. But in this case... Uh, don't we prefer. Yes, I think it's possible, but we don't. But we have, the <laughs> but, but we have uh, somebody in the department, Dr. Wolf, that's not here, that could do uh, this, this uh, neurophysiological uh, exams during surgery. But uh, on, the, on the sacral part, it was not, a d it was not in the um, sacral... Uh, uh, foramen, it was a lateral fracture, so, but uh, yes, for L5, maybe it, uh, it could be dangerous. Okay, so is the, uh, the uh, neurologic status was intact before fixation? Yes. Okay. And after also, the, the, patient, <laughs> the patient was very... Uh, was a, yes, he was a, a really strong patient. He could have a lot okay. of surgery. Without <laughs> <laughs> just, just regarding the fixation with that transverse screw to the uh, pubic symphysis, I think this fracture what might might have been too comminuted to use that from my point of view, because there was uh, like a segmental fracture to the uh, the rami. So uh, I don't think we can rely on that fixation for, for this type of fracture. 
It's not like a, a simple pubic synthesis diastasis. Yes. yes. I'm quite sure Adam Starr would have used his, his star frame on that and I, I would have done too. Uh, it's, it's, it's a really nice device for that particular fracture for a unilateral vertical shear. It's absolutely lovely because you, you do, do what you did but it, it's, it's yes. kind of designed for it. And you just attach the right side to the table, you pull the left side down, you compress it against so you get an absolute anatomic reduction. And yes, you can use a picador or something to get the synthesis right. And then you, you can fix it all uh, pretty much percutaneously. I, I agree, an infix there. You could have done your synthesis fixation and then done a, uh, an infix on top of that if you're worried about the reduction or the tilt. Mm. OK. We'll move on to the last case with uh, Regis. Okay, so it's a very quick case. Um, it's a very young man, uh, very active, who, uh, who has a motorcycle accident. Uh, he has no other uh, issue. Uh, you can see the, the AP pelvic. And uh, this is a principal uh, cat's um, there is no uh, issue on the neurovascular problem. Question is, uh, what is uh, the dia diagnostic, and uh, which approach do you f do you choose for it? <laughs> yeah. Oh. Right. So in the view and posterior view. Uh, plus interesting. It's the most interest, interesting view. Hmm. Yeah. No problem. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah, you just uh, wait your your surgery. Do you have any suggestion? Suggestion. Diagnostic. ABC, yeah. And uh, there is some kind of uh, a special uh, problem in this uh, ABC. No. Can you just go back to the the other view? Yeah. Previous one. So normally, so there's a there's a floating notch here, yeah. and the so just to explain to everyone watching, when you fix an, an anterior column fracture or an ABC, you normally base your fixation on this area of bone here, the constant fragment. So the fracture's all here, and you put all your screws in over here to pull your metalwork down and buttress your fracture. But on this side, this piece of bone here is that bit of bone there. So you can't do anything really until that is back in back inside. Yeah. So my feeling is go after that first, yeah. which I normally do from a posterior approach. Posterior approach. Yeah, you can do it anteriorly, mm -hmm. but I find it easier and better easier to visualise posteriorly. Uh, please, from the bottom of the... So, for me, it's uh, quite a uh, bifocal fracture of the coxal bone, bifocal, oh. and uh, with a loss of, uh, of presence of the bone. So, we have to make the room to get the bone back in the good position. 
but doing that, we have we are exposed to uh, 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 bleeding because uh, the vein should be compressed by the bone, and once you re remove the compression, you may have uh, a big uh, bleeding. See, so we have to be. Uh, to be to be to be aware about that, and maybe have a, a vascular surgeon with us, or something to uh, clamp the, the vein. Oh. <laughs> <See>? <laughs> and for me, so because of that, it would be more uh, anterior approach. That's why it's to discuss. Huh? Me, I, I, I. I, I agree with, with Jérôme, not for the same reason, but I think it's better to restore the anterior column completely and probably have a second approach to reduce the, pos the part of the posterior colon is completely displaced, but have, have a, um, reduce the anterior column, have a CT scan with this reduction and show wha wha where is at this moment, the posterior column, and this size, and probably, perhaps, it's possible to reduce the posterior column with the anterior approach. Can, can you show the, exo the other exopelvic view? That view exopelvic? No, but the cell de près. Just saying, with the crusher lung and back, you can track this piece of bone. No. Yeah. Is, is it not an indication for an extended approach? Oh. Extended iliofemoral approach? Mm. No. In the extended iliofemoral approach, you have absolutely not a, a better view of the, colon, of the posterior column. You have a better view of all, all the iliac wing, uh, mm -hmm. but not with the posterior column. In the posterior column, it's exactly the same as the cochlear lung and back. Mm -hmm. But you will see the iliac joint and uh, reduce the posterior column. Not of the column, but of the, the wing. The part of the bone is in place is 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 is. Mm -hmm. is very high here and, and you, you begin and very to medium. restore the anterior column and after you see where is the other and decide if you okay mystery, what do you, what do so you my, do you my approach to this has always been or oh, this one's difficult because it's inside uh, th this has kind of gone inwards but my approach in the past has been to do a curved as though you're going to do an, uh, an iliofemoral but just do the top end of it so curve around there peel the glutei back just to here I mean, so you see that because the reduction that needs to happen here is this yes. mm. versus this mm -hmm. right and then you're perfect it's an, it's an so yeah so you bring down your glutei to about there and then you f you, you find your way in here you find that pull it out towards you and I'm not saying it's easy because you've got the sciatic nerve sitting in here, uh, but you've got to turn this round and put it onto there, and then and then put some plates and uh, screws into it. Having got that back, it's now an ABC, so you now go anteriorly. So that that's that's how I've always approached those in the past. Just just do the notch and then from the back and then go to the front. No. <laughs> no, 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 uh, is, but, uh, 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 um, do you think with a, a sacroiliac approach you can uh, control the, the no. hinge there? No. No, no it's, 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 it's going to be difficult to get back. It's yeah. going to be difficult fast. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. 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 what do you do? So, we, we, we decided to. Uh, to do in the opposite direction of the vector of the of the, the fracture, so we do a, an iliostopa approach, and uh, uh, the, the reduction is not perfect, but uh, uh, we can uh, push uh, medial to lateral this uh, piece of bone by the stopa, and uh, we could uh, fix it uh, with uh, anterior posterior screws. Uh, by the iliac 
uh, window. So, um, that, that's uh, after one year, uh, one and a half, five more years after the surgery. So, <laughs> this guy is. Uh, 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 I phoned him because we are six years uh, after surgery. Uh, he continued to work. He's not uh, perfect because he, he explained that uh, with um, with phone uh, Oxford Oxford call was 50 on 60. And uh, the reverse. No, the 50. Reverse 50 is best because the maximum for Oxford call is uh, 60. I think uh, when you are good, you are five points. When you yeah. are bad, you are one point. It's opposite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Uh, so I need score. More high is the score, less is the result. I I, I check it, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, Muscle. What about the gluteus medius? Because uh, uh, gluteal superior gluteal nerve should be injured yeah. in the trauma, so you have no limping. No. Oh yeah. No. The, 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 the guy uh, is, uh, carries um, pizza. He's all right. He's a motorbike, and he continues to do this. And during the reduction, you have no bleeding. That means uh, you gently push the yes, iliac no vein and no, I, I no lesion. I just put traction, uh, traction on his leg with a pin uh, inside the okay. condyles. Under curarization. On a normal table, and uh, I push only the, the piece of bone medially. It's not perfect, but I think it's, uh, it's, good. it's good for uh, further uh, THA. Have you calculated a St. Joseph score? <laughs> <laughs> Have you calculated the St. Joseph score? <laughs> ah, yes. It's not, not yet. You can see after it's not perfect. Uh, so I explain it just to, to I think, uh, extended video of uh, femoral push is now killed. But uh, I don't know if. Uh, Participants here are doing uh, AIF again. It's no. I, I know that Adam Starr does okay. occasionally does a big T, which is uh, which is a variation on the uh, extended ilio femoral. Uh -huh. So he was suggesting for for those tr those transverse fractures we were talking about earlier. He was suggesting you can do a big T for those, which is like an ilio femoral except with an iliac crest osteotomy. Mm -hmm. I think Jean Montaigne has a comment. No, no, so uh, Regis, that, that's a, a great a great result. I would have uh, I would have thought about using an extended iliofemoral. I don't totally agree with uh, with Tom. So so this this is a nice case, uh, very unusual case. But uh, I would have used an extended iliofemoral approach probably, because I don't totally agree with Tom. Uh, I think your view of the sciatic notch is uh, is much better with that approach. And with this uh, particular fracture, I think you need to see the sagnatch quite, quite well. And I would have been afraid uh, coming from the uh, inside, not being able to replace that, uh, that sciatic notch fragment. But that's a great result. Uh, I'm not so sure I would have done better. Okay. Okay, thank you. Right. Nice, nice case. Nice, nice case. Great result. Okay, no. I think uh, it's the end of the, of the day. Thank you very much, everybody, for the <laughs> great, uh, great, day, very interesting uh, cases and session. So it was a great day and very interesting cases and uh, communication. So thank you very much for everybody. I hope we will uh, be able to organize a. Uh, this kind of uh, journey, the second day, uh, maybe in one or two years, we'll try. <laughs> and uh, thank you very much, and uh, see you soon. Thank you.